From one of the best preserved prehistoric sites in the world totally shrouded in mystery to a bizarre Mayan Batman statue, here are 10 ancient discoveries scientists still can't explain. Malta's Hypogeum There are sites all over the world that still baffle scientists today. One of the most confusing and unexplainable prehistoric sites is the Hypogeum in Malta. It's one of the best preserved prehistoric discoveries ever. It's a 6,000 year old underground burial chamber located on the small Mediterranean island of Malta and it's actually one of Europe's only Neolithic necropolises. The archaeological evidence suggests that somewhere around 4000 BC the residents of Malta began to build in such a way that they were ritualizing life and death. The Hal Safliani Hypogeum is one of the best examples of this type of building. Its underground corridors are carved into the soft limestone about 3 miles 5 kilometers from the capital city of Valletta. There were likely more impressive buildings above ground, but they have mostly been destroyed by the industrialization that started in the early 1800s. The Hypogeum stopped being used in around 2500 BC and was not discovered again until 1902. But the weirdest discovery that ever happened here has to be the abnormal skulls. Researchers found elongated skulls, skulls with cranial knitting, and all kinds of other strange bones inside the depths of the necropolis. Even until today, the skulls have largely been shrouded in mystery. Some people over the years have claimed the skulls are from serpent priests or aliens, but there is no proof of that. But the issue with these elongated skulls is that research has shown it to be natural, not from boarding or bandaging at birth. One of the favored explanations is that the skulls are actually from a different species of modern man, one lost to time. How strange is that? Puma Punku in the jungles of Bolivia is the remains of a holy site called Puma Punku, and it could be even more mysterious than the pyramids. Puma Punku translates to Door of the Puma, and so far as archaeologists understand, this was a thriving ancient town somewhere around 500 CE. Puma Punku is located about 45 miles from La Paz at an altitude of roughly 12,000 feet. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, this was the location in which the Inca believed the world was first created. What's really amazing about this place is how well the buildings are made. It's in a very isolated part of the jungle, and yet the craftsmanship of all their buildings is extremely advanced. The big stone blocks have been cut with extreme precision, with smooth right angles and with joints that fit together with machine accuracy. Plus, the megaliths found here are some of the biggest on the planet, with some of them weighing over a few tons. Most of the buildings are scattered and broken after so many years, but many of the megaliths still stand. One of the biggest mysteries is what could have destroyed such big and heavy buildings. It almost looks like a giant walked through and kicked them down. Basically, whoever created the site of Puma Punku did so with arguably more precision and more knowledge of building concepts than even the ancient Egyptians. And to this day, nobody is entirely sure how such stonework was accomplished. Plain of Jars the Plain of Jars is another place that scientists simply can't quite wrap their heads around. It's an ancient archaeological site located in the center of Laos, a landlocked country between Southeast Asia and China, and it's full of thousands of stone vessels. There are literally thousands of these strange stone jars scattered all across the plains. Archaeologists have also found many of the jars in forests and mountains in different regions of Laos. However, scientists have been trying to figure out why the stone jars were littered across so many remote places for years, and they still don't have a logical answer. Just recently, archaeologists unearthed another ancient burial site located at the Plain of Jars that they estimated to be 2,500 years old. And using new technology, scientists are combining footage from aerial drones with virtual reality so they can look at the site from new angles. According to Live Science, another reason the jars have not been studied so much is because the area was bombed extensively by the Americans during the Vietnam War, just like neighboring Cambodia, and many of the bombs that fell are still stuck somewhere in the ground and un detonated. That makes it very dangerous to be walking around. We know the jars are for burial, but the unanswered question is why they are spread around in such a confusing way. It's like the world's sloppiest graveyard. What do you think they mean? Where do you think they come from, and why were they left scattered? Could it be some type of strange connect the dots puzzle or physical treasure map? Let me know your best guesses in the comments below, then hit subscribe when you're done. You won't want to miss the next awesome videos in store, but the only way to make sure you see all of them is to subscribe. Sahama Lines 
Everyone is relatively familiar with the mysterious Nazca Lines in Peru, but have you heard of the Sahama Lines in Bolivia? These lines are just as mysterious, though I will be the first to admit they are significantly less symbolic. Scattered across the western region of Bolivia are thousands of perfectly straight lines crisscrossing each other for absolutely no reason. They stretch on and on for miles and lead to nowhere. From satellite images, these definitely look like back roads, but they aren't. These lines are actually etched into the sand of the desert, and researchers believe the lines are geoglyphs left behind by the indigenous people in the region around 3,000 years years ago. They are very close to the Nevado Sahama volcano, which happens to be the highest point in the entire country. But unlike the Nazca lines, these don't really show any interesting imagery like animals or people. Out of the thousands of lines, each one is somewhere between 3 and 10 feet, 1 to 3 meters in width. But every single line is perfectly straight despite that rugged terrain of the land. Most researchers believe this would have been quite a feat for indigenous people who had no modern technology. If you were to add up all the lines in the area, you would get 10,000 miles, 16,000 kilometers of road. Some even believe this is the largest work of art ever made. The indigenous people would have had to scrape away the top surface of the rock to reveal the lighter surface beneath, but nobody knows why. Committing so much effort to the endeavor seems absolutely illogical and pointless. The only theory that makes a little bit of sense is the one that claims that the footpaths led to shrines and sacred sites, but nobody can confirm this. To this day, the lines remain a mystery. The Venus Figurines the Venus figurines are thought to be some of the earliest examples of figurative art on the entire planet. The Venus figurines are tiny little statuettes of women with huge hips and other generous proportions, and they date as far back as around 40,000 BC. That makes these female statuettes prehistoric, and despite this, they are shrouded in absolute mystery. Their interpretation has changed throughout the years depending on current culture. Archaeologists have interpreted them as portrayals of goddesses, as fertility talismans, or even as nourishment charms. And while some researchers have focused on the larger figurines that depict quite shapely people, there are indeed figurines that are unusually slender. They seem to depict every different form of body, which is quite bizarre considering they would have been made basically by prehistoric cave people. Throughout the years, over 200 figurines have been found across Europe and Asia, all the way from France to Siberia. These were carved in a time before humans even had written language, and because of that, there is no definitive proof for what the figurines represent. And to be quite honest, most of the researchers trying to figure it out are just grasping at straws. For all we know, they were literally just toys whittled by children who were bored. The Oracle of Delphi the Oracle of Delphi was basically just a witch doctor. Just like the shamans in the Amazon and other magical members of society thousands of years ago who claimed to see the future, the Oracle of Delphi was just a witch doctor who hallucinated a lot. She is definitely the most famous oracle in Greek history and is still relevant in today's popular culture. And while there isn't really a mystery surrounding how exactly the oracle predicted the future or advised kings, as we know she basically saw imaginary sites and then made up a bunch of predictions, some new scientific finds are uncovering just how exactly the oracle got her magical visions up there on the hill in her temple. According to Live Science, new research from an Italian study is saying that the Oracle of Delphi might have not even ingested anything to hallucinate. The temple room where she channeled the wisdom of the gods may have actually been deficient in oxygen, with weak air ventilation and strong methane gases being released from the soil. It could have made her hallucinate. The legends say that the Oracle entered a trance by inhaling fumes that came from deep fissures underneath the temple, and this could actually be what was going on. Previous to this study, there was quite a bit of mystery surrounding the whole oracle thing, with a lot of unfounded assumptions going around. But now it's looking like it actually does make sense. Poisonous gas was leaking out of the floor, and it was giving the oracle visions of the future. Either that, or the gods really were speaking through her. Stone Age Tools a new discovery out of India is suggesting that humans may have been using tools a lot earlier than previously thought. It's originally believed that humans dispersed out of Africa and settled in India around 125,000 years ago, or even as late as 70,000 years ago. It would have been around this time when we were using stone tools throughout Europe and Africa, as well as the few parts of Asia that were inhabited. However, a new discovery in India has revealed 7,000 tools from the Stone Age that date back to around 385,000 years ago. 
ago. These findings were published in the journal Nature in 2018, and they basically flip the script on what we know about human dispersal from Africa and when it happened. There are even some very old artifacts from the site which is located near the city of Chennai in southern India that date back to around 1.5 million years ago. However, the big issue with this find and the thing that is really confusing scientists is that there were no fossils found anywhere near the tools. There is a huge treasure trove of ancient stone tools that date back hundreds of thousands of years and not a single skeleton. And so researchers have no way of telling who exactly left these tools and how old the people were. It's a total mystery, but it's also suggesting that we may have been spreading around the earth and using tools much earlier than previously imagined. Stonehenge Stonehenge is one of the most confusing and mysterious sites in all of the United Kingdom. Of course, that's only until you actually go there and see it and you see the cars zipping by on the freeway about 30 feet from the actual stones. It really ruins the effect and the mystery. However, scientists have been stumped for years and years over who brought the stones, where they brought the stones from, and what exactly was going on in this site in ancient times. There have been lots of theories, but evidence and truth has been in short supply. Up until recently, archaeologists only knew the type of rock the stones were built out of, and they knew that the stones were dragged from an area about 25 miles 40 kilometers north of Stonehenge, somewhere around 2500 BC. Other than that, there was not much that anyone knew. However, according to the University of Brighton, the stones have been traced back to a very specific two square mile range of hills. Researchers found a small area where they believe the giant rocks were being used to construct prehistoric tombs over 1,000 years before Stonehenge was built. But that still doesn't answer the who, what, where, and why. There is yet more we don't know and may not ever know. Mayan Batman it's nice to think that Batman was actually created by the Mayans thousands of years ago. However, that is completely unlikely and absolutely ridiculous. You may have seen the images of the ancient Mayan sculpture of Batman floating around the internet, but let me assure you, it's absolutely not ancient. It was crafted in 2014 by an artist as part of an exhibition at the Mexican Museum of Design. The sculpture was meant to explore the iconic character of Batman through the eyes of Mexican creativity. But of course, people got a hold of the photo and started spamming it across the internet claiming it to be thousands of years old. It absolutely is not. The similarities here, and perhaps what makes it a little believable, is that there is indeed a bat god found in Mayan mythology named Kamazots, but that definitely was not the inspiration for Batman, and this sculpture is definitely not 2500 years old. Although I'll be the first to admit how cool that really would be. Alexander the Great's Tomb People have been trying to locate the tomb of Alexander the Great ever since his death. It is one of the greatest mysteries that is still going on today. It's been a very long time since Alexander the Great conquered much of the known world, and not a single person has been able to locate his tomb. This will definitely be the largest archaeological discovery of the century when and if it ever happens. There are lots of clues, lots of theories, but everything has only ever led to disappointment. Let's go back to Alexander's death for a minute. It's known that he died in Babylon in 323 BC, but his cause of death is disputed. It could have been typhoid, malaria, alcohol poisoning, an assassination, or an autoimmune disorder. In any case, he was only 32 when he died. It's believed that his advisors first buried him in Memphis, but then changed their minds and took him to Alexandria to be buried there. It's believed that in Alexandria, his tomb became a place of worship. But when the Roman Emperor Theodosius banned pagan worship in 392 AD, Alexander's body went missing from his tomb. It's believed that another tomb was built, but where? Some claim it to be in the Siwa Oasis, while others claim it's actually in Venice. The truth is that nobody knows what happened to the most legendary king of all time, or where his current resting place is. Do you have any theories on these discoveries? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. See you again soon for another fun video.